What is this? Is that... Is that a new wheel? New wheel on the market? The Recchio wheel? Oh my god, a new wheel? A new wheel on the market. Not a King Song. Not an In Motion. Not a Veteran Sherman. Not a Gotway. A Recchio. All right, what's going on, guys? It's your man, George. Back for another episode. Today, I wanted to talk about the Recchio wheel. Unfortunately, it, not all is as it seems, despite this super high quality commercial that was just put out on YouTube last night. The Recchio wheel is not a production wheel. That's right, you heard me. It is not a new production wheel. Unfortunately, this is a one-off just designed by a man in Spain. The wheel itself is pretty awesome. I've been seeing some teasers for this wheel on the internet, be it the forums, be it Facebook. You know, now we've got some awesome videos of this wheel in action. But unfortunately, this is not a wheel that is going to production. But it's still pretty awesome, so I figured we would talk about it, see someone's passion project, see what people are working on with their own homemade electric unicycle. So let's get into it a little bit. First of all, let's just take a look at it in action. It looks a little funky to me. I like how much tire is actually kind of exposed, but it's super top heavy looking. But I do like that there's a ton of tire there. If you're a mobber, if you're a stair mobber, or if you're an off-road rider, not having any case to get in the way, that's good stuff. You want to have more tire exposed, the better. You know, it looks like it's got some pretty decent performance. He didn't actually get into the specs of how fast it'll really go. He did mention it'll go somewhere between 30 and 40 miles an hour. You know, and it's a 1500 watt hour battery or 1550. So, you know, based on the V11, I would assume you're going to get in the range of 30 to 40 miles, depending on how hard you ride it. And I shouldn't say you're going to get because only this guy is going to get. Again, this is his passion project, his one-off that he created. So no, this wheel is not going to be coming to the American market anytime soon. I kind of like the visual of it. It's weird how the bars are inside of the battery panel. So it makes the wheel look like it's super skinny, especially from far away when you see some of these views. It looks like it's a super skinny wheel, but in reality, it's, it's actually pretty chunky because it's got those big battery packs on the side of it. But this thing's really cool. It's awesome to see somebody working on their own homemade electric unicycle not coming from china you know this one was made in spain i really like the dial on the top it's a speed speedometer an actual like physical speedometer not like an app or a touch screen it's like an old school it's like a, like in your car it's kind of cool and the roll cage looks interesting i mean it looks to me more like it's a accessory mount more than a roll cage because the batteries do stick way outside of the, the actual uh, steel bars, which I think is an interesting design choice. Personally, I think I would try to get those bars sticking outside of the batteries to try and protect them. They're the they're part that you really need to protect. But the mud flap is cool. He just made it out of an old motocross tire. It's pretty clever. It looks interesting. It looks durable, like it's not gonna break when you crash. Spike pedals, of course, you gotta have your spike pedals. And apparently the speedometer is linked directly to GPS. So it's not uh, based on any of the RPMs of the motor or anything. It's actually a GPS based speedometer, which is cool. So you're getting a pretty accurate speed reading on it. I gotta say this presentation that he put together is really high quality. I honestly thought that for the first 15 minutes until he mentions that he's not making these for production, I really thought this was going to be a new production wheel. I mean, this is a really high quality presentation. We haven't even seen something this high come from Gotway or King Song or even In Motion does more janky kind of release commercials than this. This was a really well put together um, little presentation for us. So I definitely appreciate the effort that went into that. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like you're going to be able to buy one of these wheels, but. That's another story. I do like how the roll cage is kind of slanted inward to really expose a lot of tire. Like I said, if you're going to be hitting stairs or anything or going off-road or anything like that, having more tire exposed is definitely better than having those potential clip areas. You know, not just clipping your pedals, but I don't know. When you take like a Sherman up and down stairs, 
there's a really good chance you're going to hit those roll bars and cause yourself to crash. I thought it was interesting how he made, it looks like a cloth handle almost, or maybe it's rope, but the handle kind of slides back and forth and is able to kind of just pick it up from the bars. It's an interesting little solution he came up with. No trolley handle though. You know, he does say that this is specifically made to be an off-road wheel. He didn't really make it as a city wheel like most of the wheels that are being produced right now this one is specifically for off-roading so he's got the knobby tire on it he says it's the same tire that's on the sherman the lighting is really interesting on this wheel he's actually got the front wheel the front light is actually not only adjustable up and down but it just plugs in so you can actually swap it out for any light i thought that was interesting if you felt like uh, upgrading it in the future he says uh, i believe he's a 25 watt light on it right now so i'm sure it's plenty powerful for him and then in the back of the wheel, he's got this cool little speaker system. You know, it doesn't come with any speakers when he first made it, but he's got this add-on that he can kind of stick on the back, which I thought was really cool. It was a, a, a good use of space. You know, some of the things I don't like about the wheel, I'm sure he's going to address and fix in the future. I don't like that the side panels are Velcroed on. <laughs> I'm sure he's going to fix that at some point and, and make those a little bit more secure. Hopefully no water gets in there or anything like that. I mean, it's an off-roading wheel, so it's definitely going to get dirty if it's just the shell is just Velcroed around the batteries. But uh, like I said, I'm sure he'll fix it. You know, one thing I really didn't like is his seat. I thought it was an interesting um, idea having a seat that can kind of move around and is low profile and snaps into the bars. I thought it was a cool idea, but I don't like that it moves around really. I mean, it would be fine if it snapped into different slots, right? So you could move it forward and backward, but it was still secure. I don't like that it seems to just free slide. And it's also extremely low. I, I've noticed and from feedback with other people who sit ride, because I don't really sit ride, but people who do sit ride seem to like higher seats. The higher up, the more comfortable the seat tends to be. So something that's small, probably not the greatest seat in the world, but that's to each rider's own preference. So yeah, maybe he likes to be closer down to the wheel, a little bit more crouched. Or maybe he's got short legs. You know, I do like how easy it is for him to get into the wheel. That is one thing he talked about, how quick a tire change is for him to be able to just kind of pop the wheel off the side there. It's a good design. I mean, he's got the the, uh, the motor. He's got a quick connect to the motor, which, come on, guys. That's, a, that's an obvious thing. All these companies could, could give us a quick connect to the motor. I mean, what's that cost? An extra dollar for the connect? You know, I mean, maybe you're afraid of it coming unconnected, but realistically, <laughs> it makes life so much easier if you had to change a tire or something rather than having to fiddle with the control board that's one thing one design i really hate on modern wheels right now and i'm i'm positive it'll go away because it's just archaic to make the end user have to like literally disconnect wires from the control board i mean i get it the the industry is still new we're still in the infancy and we're still trying to you know if you're buying these devices you really should get familiar with them because you're probably going to have to do some work you're going to have to touch that control board but man, going into the future, if you really want these to catch mainstream, you can't have people touching the control board, connecting and disconnecting wires and re-siliconing. That's absolutely ridiculous, especially when a connector, what, how much could a connector possibly cost? $10? Like, if we're talking about one of the best connectors you can get, like, really, that's something that needs to start showing up on every single wheel, some kind of a quick connect to the motor. That's, it's ridiculous that not a single machine currently has a, a motor quick connect. That's ridiculous. All in all, I really like this little project he's got going here. It's a really unique wheel. It's his, something of his own. He made it to fit the, the parameters that he personally needed. I like that. I think it was really cool that he put this thing together. You know, I hope we start seeing some more homemade wheels coming from riders around the world. Although I gotta say, I was so disappointed when I found out this wasn't a production wheel. I really thought from the quality of the video that he had made and from some of the, the hints online and stuff, I really thought this was going to be a production wheel. So it was kind of sad to see that this was just somebody's hobby project. But it is what it is, you know. You know, I'd be a little bit interested to find out what he's using. I, I believe he said he's using the motor from a rock wheel, which is a Korean company that actually... I don't think they're making wheels right now. I, I've heard rumors of them like producing a new wheel. They actually, there's rumors they're going to be producing a suspension wheel. I don't, I haven't heard too much about it. I don't really know what's going on with that company. They, they've been in and out of production for a long time now. 
So we'll have to see what holds the future for Rock Wheel. But he said this is a Rock Wheel motor. I'm wondering if it's also a Rock Wheel control board. I would have to assume. I, 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 I'm interested to see what control board he's actually using in this wheel. I don't think it was a custom control board. I, I do believe he just kind of took the control board out of another wheel, which I, I believe he said the Rock Wheel. All in all, awesome project. I love seeing stuff like this. If you guys know of anybody other wheels, like I saw the Tesla wheel, that was kind of cool. If you guys want me to do a little commentary video on the Tesla wheel, that was another homebrew wheel that somebody put out recently. Um, like the video, comment, subscribe, all that kind of stuff, and let me know what you think. Let me know if you want me to do some more commentary videos on these types of things. There's actually an American company about to produce an actual production wheel, the um, Evolution wheel. We saw Wrong Way actually did a video about that. Maybe we could do a commentary about that if you guys like these, these styles of videos. Um, let me know in the comment section below. All right, enough talking about a wheel that you can never purchase and you'll probably never see in person. Um, this was really cool to see it. The presentation that he put together was fantastic. So I really appreciate you guys watching this video. As always, ride safe out there. And I'll see you next time.